a DOS Bay security officer speaks out. The following is a list of questions that were directed to former DOS Bay security officer, Thomas Edwin Costello approximately a year before his death or disappearance. They are followed by his responses. Question, when exactly was the upper human occupied level of the Arculeta installation constructed? Answer. I heard DOS was started in 1937 to 1938, by the Army engineers, enlarged over the years. Most recent work was completed 1965 to 1966, to connect tunnels to the Page, Arizona base, site of one of the older underground facilities. The Four Corners base is called Parica. Most of the Native Americans the Indians living in that area are aware of that base, and could tell us about the underground life forms that frequently are spotted near those, communities, Bigfoot, etc. Note, the references to the Dulce base here deal mainly with the upper levels, not the extreme lower levels which include vast natural caverns and, some believe, very ancient tunnel systems as well. This would include the tunnels illuminated by phosphorus pentoxide which the alien greys avoid, and the origin of which is unknown. In fact sources have informed us that some of the underground NORAD facilities of Colorado, were constructed within or in existing cavern systems, suggesting that Ray Palmer and Richard Schaefer were correct when as early as the mid-1940s, they wrote about the government's search for ancient underground cave and tunnel systems to be converted for their own use. Branton, question, by what means was the upper installations constructed? Are you familiar with the alleged developments made by the RAND Corporation of a highly efficient, bore or mole machine capable of melting rock using nuclear-powered wool from graphite-tipped drill cones? Answer. According to several senior maintenance workers, part of it was blasted by nuclear devices in the 60s. There are sections, like the shuttle tunnels, that were formed by an advanced tunneling machine that leaves the tunnel walls smooth. The finished walls in those tubes resemble polished black glass. Question, by whom was the DOS installation originally constructed? Answer, nature started the caverns. The Draco reptilian humanoids used the caverns and tunnels for centuries. Later, through Rand Corporation plans, it was enlarged repeatedly. The original caverns included ice caves and sulfur springs that the aliens found perfect for their needs. The Dulce Caverns rival Carlsbad Caverns in size. Note, Carlsbad Caverns and especially the adjacent Lechagilla Caves are officially among the largest and deepest in the world, with several leads that remain to be explored by professional speleomots Branton. Question, what exactly are the cattle and human organs such as blood, anal tissue, eyes, reproductive organs, tongues, etc. used for that is, the organs obtained via cattle and human mutilations? Answer. Read the so-called DOS papers for more information. Question: Are the various electromagnetically controlled air or spacecraft that have been seen leaving from and arriving at Mount Archula answer manned by humans, the alien entities, or both? Answer: Arculeta Mesa is a minor area. The craft leave and are stored in five areas. One is SE of Dulce, one near Durango Company, one at Taos, NM, and the main fleet is stored at LOS Alamos under note. I believe Thomas Costello is referring to the Joint Operational Fleet, from combined sources however it appears as if DOS is absolutely surrounded on all sides, by alien bases, and that Arculeta Peak although apparently the central nexus of the entire underground network, is nevertheless just one part of an overall complex that some claim is nearly the size of Manhattan. One source has indicated that there are chambers a few hundred feet below the very town of DOS itself that are part of level 1 of the facility. This close proximity may explain why it has usually been described as the doll space. Apparently even with this high security clearance, Thomas Costello was only familiar with one part of the overall mega complex which underlies the area. Whatever amount of activity is taking place there, different sources seem to indicate that the town of Dulce nevertheless lies over a major crossroads, convergence or intersection area of alien activity even though the core of alien activity has been extended to Los Alamos, Los Alamos and the mountainous regions east and southeast of it in and around the Santa Fe, National Forest seem to be the major nest of reptiloid gray forces in North America, although there is also a large number of dens scattered throughout the underground networks. Between Dulce and Area 51, Dulce seems to be a major throughpoint for exterran and subterran reptilian activity, a central infiltration zone for surface operatives, as well as an operational base for abduction and plantation mutilation agendas and also a major convergence for subshuttle terminals, 
UFO ports, and so on. Branton, question, others have suggested that some of the entities below DOS are not of extraterrestrial origin, and that they are actually descended from saurian or reptiloid beings such as the Velociraptors, or Stenonicosaurus equalis a serpentine race or races similar to that hinted at in the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Answer. Yes, some reptoids are native to this planet. The ruling caste of aliens are reptilian, the beige or white beings are called the Draco. Other reptilian beings are green, and some are brown. They were an ancient race on Earth, living underground. It may have been one of the draconian beings that tempted even the Garden of Eden. Reptoids rightly consider themselves native Terrans. Perhaps they are the ones we call the fallen angels. Maybe not either way, we are considered the squatters on Earth. Question. Some have suggested that the so-called underground ET bases and tunnels may, for a large part, be literally thousands of years old, constructions of an antediluvian race which attained to a considerable level of scientific complexity, and who were destroyed by a divinely initiated cataclysm which took place after they attempted to merge their science with occult supernatural forces. For instance some have suggested that the Bermuda Triangle phenomena may be the result of an out-of-control Atlantean experiment that led to a space-time disaster which produced electromagnetic fallout in the Triangle area and elsewhere after they had accidentally loosed powerful forces and energies into the world that they knew very little about. Do your observations tend to confirm or refute such a possibility? Answer. I'm not sure about the divine part, but these aliens consider themselves native Terrans. Answer: Where do the little grey aliens fit in question? They work for, and are controlled by the Draco, there are other grey-skinned beings that are not in league with the Draco. Question: Did you ever talk to any of the aliens at the base? Answer: Since I was the senior security technician at that base, I had to communicate with them on a daily basis. If there were any problems that involved security or video cameras, I was the one they called. It was the reptilian working caste that usually did the physical labor in the lower levels. Adults. Decisions involving that caste were usually made by the White Draco. When human workers caused problems for the working caste, the reptoids went to the White Draconian boss, and the Draco called me. At times, it felt like it was a never-ending problem. Several human workers resented the no-nonsense or get-back-to-work attitude the working caste lives by. When needed, intervention became a vital tool. The biggest problem were human workers who foolishly wandered around near the off-limits areas of the alien section. I guess it's human nature to be curious and to wonder what is past the barriers. Too often someone found a way to bypass the barriers and nosed around. The cameras near the entrance usually stopped them before they got themselves in serious trouble. A few times I had to formally request the return of a human worker. Question: Are there other sites teed into the shuttle network other than those which you mentioned, and if so, where are the entrances? Answer: Where? Everywhere, they crisscross the world as an endless subterranean highway. Like a freeway, except this one is underground. The subterranean highway in America is like a freeway except it's underground. That highway depends on electric motors for trucks, cars and buses for the paved roads, and it is for limited travel. There is another style of transit for freight and for passengers that is for rapid travel. That worldwide network is called the sub-global system. It has checkpoints at each country entry. There are shuttle tubes that shoot the trains at incredible speeds using a maglev and vacuum method. They travel at a speed that excels the speed of sound. Part of your question involves the location of entrances to that base. The easiest way to answer is to say every state in the United States of America has them. Frequently, the entrances are camouflaged as sand quarries, or mining operations. Other complex portals are found on military bases. New Mexico and Arizona have the largest amounts of entrances followed by California, Montana, Idaho, Colorado, Pennsylvania. Kansas, Arkansas and Missouri, of all the states Florida and North Dakota have the least amount of entrances, Wyoming has a road that opens directly into the subterranean freeway, that road is no longer in use, but could be reactivated if they decide to do so, with minimal cost. It's located near Brooks Lake. Question, are there any bases in the state of Utah? Note, Thomas mentioned several areas surrounding Utah, Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Nevada and Idaho, 
where there are connections, but little on Utah which according to some sources lies directly over one of the largest natural, cavern systems in North America, one that is said to reach deep beneath the Western Rockies as well as beneath the Bonneville, Basin, have you heard anything about an alleged underground installation within the Wasatch, Mountains, answer. Salt Lake, Lake Powell area, Dark Canyon, Dugway Grounds, Modena, Vernal. All have exits there. Others too, note, there have been many rumors of ancient tunnel systems being intersected during the excavations, of subassment levels below major industrial and mall areas in downtown Salt Lake City. Various stories surrounding these tunnels include, explorers who have entered the tunnels and never returned, reports of lizard people down, in the labyrinths, reports of greys working with humans on electronic equipment and massive, building projects going on in huge caverns beneath the mountains to the east, reports of humans, who are part of an Asian-based Agarty kingdom who maintain colonies within the tunnels and, caverns below and who are in conflict with the reptiloids, greys, and a group collaborating human fascists from a network of massive underground facilities, beneath the Neuschwabenland region of Antarctica. Reports of men in suits having been seen, pacing back and forth through large underground chambers carrying Uzi machine guns. Reports, of seemingly bottomless shafts. Large tunnels strung with lights that are big enough to drive, a semi-truck through. Sections of tunnel walls that look solid yet which one could put their, hands through. Rooms which emanate a strange greenish phosphorescent glow. Abductees who are, taken below and encounter all types of aliens discs that have been seen emerging from the mountains to the east and attacking incoming UFOs over the valley. Dungeons and Dragons fanatics, who have been down in the tunnels and tell wild stories of hundreds of miles of maze-like passages, reports of connections to the tunnel systems via the seaward drainage network especially underneath the downtown crossroads area. Reports of alien activity similar to that which has been described in connection to Dulce, New Mexico and reports of a huge cavern network that reaches beyond the border of the state in all directions a huge network that connects the underground systems of Nevada with those of New Mexico. There is a famous story which is not openly talked about there are two versions, both may be true, in one version a Mormon temple worker penetrated an underground tunnel below the square in downtown Salt Lake City and traveled for some distance through a series of underground catacombs until running into a lizard-like man. The creature attempted to attack him but the man escaped and managed to find his way back, to the surface. He began telling other people what had happened and soon afterwards the government arrived, in the area and went in and closed off many of the tunnels leading to the subassments of the, temple. Presumably there was some heated debates over how much of the underground system this denomination, was allowed to control. A similar dispute apparently occurred to the southwest where the LDS church maintained a large, storage facility under Granite Mountain in Little Cottonwood Canyon, within the upper levels of a vast network of caverns. Fascist CIA elements and the Greys came in and took control of the larger caverns deeper within the mountain and ordered the vault workers to stay out of the forbidden areas and stated that the U.S. government was now using them for national security purposes and that it was their patriotic duty to maintain the secret. The other version concerned a custodian who entered a tunnel near the cinema's area below the crossroads mall across the street and to the south from the temple square. While excavation was being carried out into that part of the mall, the worker entered the tunnel and before long encountered a serpent-type man, beat a hasty retreat, and told his fellow workers what he had seen. The FBI and the or the local police soon arrived and sealed the tunnel. Another story involved a young man who, along with a friend, had used a chain tied to his pickup truck to rip up a manhole cover in the area near the mall, and the square. They navigated through a maze of sewer passages underneath and came to a shaft that descended, in a series of five small rooms one below the other, and from the bottom room a tunnel led south into a large chamber wherein they saw a seemingly, bottomless shaft, a large southwest tunnel strung with lights and large enough to drive a semi through and the footprints of some type of thredoed bipedal creature. Other sources imply that early pioneers and settlers of the area who explored these tunnels, came in contact with and in some cases even joined with some of the Telosianagartai Melchized Cayman, underground colonies below the Salt Lake Flats, the Salt Lake Valley and the Western Rockies. These subterraneans had formerly established territorial agreements with the reptiloids and greys before the aliens began invading their subterranean lands below the Intermountain West. 
In mass in the early 1900s, the treaties were part of an attempt to stave off a possible interspecies conflict, as skirmishes between the humanoids Teros and reptiloids Teros within the cavern networks of North America had been increasing since the 1920s, 30s and 40s, because of a somewhat non-exclusive collective unknown with which these humans interacted, it was decided that one possible way to convert the reptilians into becoming beings of emotion and compassion was to allow them access to the group consciousness, the reptiloids however, once given access, immediately began taking advantage of the collective and used it to control the humans on a subliminal basis. The ease with which this occurred may have been enhanced by the fact that the reptiloids and greys were already operating as part of a collective or group mind, one which was far more complex than the Ashtar or Astarte collective itself which many of the Adharshans depended on. This suggests that the reptilian collective or hive itself is absolutely void of any and all care, concern or compassion for human beings. Individual reptiloids operating distinct from the draconian collective might however be tamed by other collective free humanoids in some cases as some have reportedly been tamed by the Andropliadian worlds. If the non-humans could be severed from the collective they might be deprogrammed and reprogrammed, so to speak and even attain individual awareness and a degree of emotionalism. In such cases it would not be advisable to give these creatures equal standing among humans, and absolute subservience and monitoring should be enforced even if means were found to sever them from the collective mind network. When dealing with the reptilian forces, unconditional surrender should be first offered, and if this is not accepted then direct military action would be justified especially in light of the many permanent abductees whom the greys and reptiloids have taken captive those who are still alive to their underground systems. Most of the treaties that the humanoids had made with the reptiloids down under have since been broken. Especially following the Groom Wars of 1975 and the Dulles Wars of 1979, during which time much of the underground U.S. base networks which were funded by American tax dollars by the way were taken over by the Greys. Some sources have implied that the aliens took advantage of the chaos especially during the Dulles Wars and commenced to invade and conquer several of the older underground colonies. This apparently led to a rift in the Ashtar Collective, with many humanoids and hybrids splitting off and joining with the Andropliadian Federation, non-interventionists, and many reptiloids and heartless humanoid agents splitting off and joining with the interventionists of the Draco Orion Empire. The Sirius B system which aside from Arcturus and Sol has been the major center of Ashtar activity, has since been shaken by the split between the two opposing Ashtarian factions and war had reportedly raged through the Sirius system for several years, according to some contactees, an apparent reflection of the division within the underground networks of North America between the Pleiadian-backed Syrian humanoids and Orion-backed Syrian reptiloids which both had maintained operations within the underground levels before the Dulce Wars broke out. The Dulce Wars were just the mere tip of the proverbial iceberg when we consider that the overall events which happened at Dulce had a chain reaction effect throughout this whole sector of not the galaxy. Before the division occurred, the reptiloids were invited to take part in peace talks in Telus and elsewhere as an act of good faith, but the reptiloid Greek collectivists were more interested in expanding their empire and feeding their insatiable appetite for conquest than they were in making peace. Although they agreed to peace treaties that they never intended to keep for Trojan horse manipulation purposes, there is a remnant collaboration such as that taking place in the underground facilities near Paradox Nevada where collectivist humanoids and reptiloids from Sirius and Sol still maintain a collaboration of necessity in order to establish a global control system. However a large number of humanoids within the underground systems are at war with the collectivist interventionist, reptilian infiltrators who would otherwise assimilate these humanoids into their collective, through deception, espionage and mind control. Now several contactees like Alex Collier, Ray Keller, Stan Johnson and others are claiming that the conflicts and serious between the Andropliadian backed Ashtar forces and the Draco Orion backed Ashtar forces which were infiltrated and commandeered by Draco Orion agents have now spread to the soul system, as both stellar superpowers have focused on this most strategic system, intent on protecting their respective interests here from being subverted by the other side. Brenton, question. Does the MT, Arculeta shuttle system connect with a shuttle system which allegedly radiates from MT, Shasta in Northern California? Answer. Yes. MT, 
Shasta is a major site of alien elder race reptilian race human meetings, beginning Cleveland, Grover every president in United States history have visited Telo City, Truman was supposed to have visited the lower realms as a high archon on Earth, he was supposed to have met the king of the world there, and gave him the keys to the US, a, note, whether or not the reigning king of the Agarty realms at the time had benevolent or other, motives, subjecting America to an outside superpower without congressional consent would be considered, high treason, although unelected appointed individuals working within the executive military industrial, branch of government might choose to do so of their own volition without congressional or, senatorial consent, such an act cannot apply to the America which is based on the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution and the Bill of Rights. There are apparently two nations occupying the United States, the traditional grassroots America established by the Founding Fathers and led by the electorate, government, and the fascist Bavarian Lodge-backed underground nation led by the corporate government, which is contesting the original America on its own soil. Some predict an inevitable civil war between the electorate constitutional surface government of the United States, and the joint humanoid reptiloid corporate national global socialist underground New World Order government which incidentally was bought and paid for by American taxpayers and other unsavory money-making projects. This war will apparently provoke an armed United Nations slash New World Order invasion of the United States of America which, according to George Washington's famous vision at Valley Forge in 1777, will ultimately end with an American victory as a result of divine intervention. Something like this may be inevitable if freedom is to be preserved on this world, and beyond. We should never forget however that the NWO corporate elite and their draconian masters intend to depopulate the surface of this planet and the underground systems as well. According to one Navy intelligence source the 33 plus Masons there are allegedly several degrees above the 33rd degree which interact directly with the draconians and are part of the interplanetary. Initiatory lodges intend to set the left-wing caverns and the right-wing caverns against each other in order to depopulate the underground realms so that they can impose absolute Bavarian draconian global control of both worlds. The 33 plus and higher degrees according to the source intend to ride out the inferno in super-secret fortified caverns while the 33rd and lower degree masons and their respective left-wing and right-wing armies will be left to die in the surface and subsurface wars. It may be that some of the 33 plus masons intend to ride out the holocaust in their alternative 3 bases on the moon and mars, if those bases are still active. Remember, the roots of both the right-wing National Socialist and the left-wing Global Socialist agendas, trace back to Bavaria. Isn't it interesting that the legendary dragon has two wings a right wing and a left wing, both of which are controlled by a single beast in essence. When it comes right down to it the war is between the Judeo-Christian based constitutional, Republic of America and the Luciferian Gulpus Socialist Empire of Bavaria. Both the right and left wing movements are Machiavellian extremes created by the Bavarian, black nobility black hair being a reference to something hidden that cannot be seen, and not skin color in order to foment global chaos. There are several claims that the collaboration with the reptilians began with the Luciferian cults of Bavaria, and was later brought into America via the infiltration of the Scottish right and the fascist core of the NSA-CIA. There may have nevertheless been a reptilian presence below North America within the caverns, that dates back several centuries. However a massive reptilian infestation of these underground systems seems to have begun near the beginning of the 20th century. MT, Arculeta might be considered the capital of the alien segment of the secret Bavarian Draconian, New World Order government in America answer with the deep underground systems beneath the Denver International Airport being the capital of the human segment of the secret government. Branton, Truman received assurance to new high technology and victory over all enemies on Earth. He then was introduced to Samaza and Cooch, aliens from Boots and Tiffin Draco, both reptilian kings or ambassadors. Truman updated the 100 treaty that began in 1933, Roosevelt and requested magnetic advance, space knowledge and experiments. Kuch agreed, Samaza partially agreed, he exchanged hostages for genetic experiments and magnetic advance, but vetoed space and beam weaponry. Question, did you notice any involvement of high-level Freemasons, 
Rosicrucians or Jesuits within the underground installation and or with the aliens, this question is based on the assumption made by some researchers that many of the Masonic lodges were, beginning about 1776, infiltrated by the Bavarian Illuminati. Much of the Masonic world is ultimately controlled by the Bavarian Lodge of Act 33 plus degrees of Scottish Rite Masonry, a rite which according to early Masonic authority Rebold can be traced back to the Jesuit College at Clermont in Paris a rite which advocates the destruction of national sovereignties in exchange for world government, the destruction of religious and especially Judeo-Christian movements, and the destruction of the family structure to be replaced by state control of children, etc., as opposed to the more traditional Protestant Christianized York Rite of Masonry which the Scottish Rite has attempted to subvert since its inception into Masonry. This question was also based on claims from a former 33rd degree Mason, James Shaw, that the Scottish Rite headquarters in the House of the Temple which lies at the northern apex of the pentagram-like street lay out of Washington, D.C., is filled with all kinds of indications of serpent worship in the form of murals, carvings, statues, etc., depicting serpentine figures. Actually, from what my sources tell me, not only are there degrees beyond the 33rd degree, but the 33rd degree itself is made up of two cores, an inner and outer core, the 33rd degree and the 33 plus degree. In the past when the 33rd degree initiation was reached a potential initiate might have been given a Bible or a cross and asked to spit on it or desecrate it in some manner. If they refused to do this they were told that they had made the right decision and remained in the outer core of the 33rd degree, thinking that they had finally arrived. If they did or do commit this form of blasphemy then they are told that they have made the right decision and they are sent on to the inner core of the 33 plus degree which is the springboard to the higher levels which interact with the joint humanoid reptiloid, Ashtarian lodges or branches of the serpent cult on other planets, within underground cities, and possibly even other dimensions. One source informs me that former President George Herbert Walker Bush who was at one time, the head of MJ-12 had attained to the 42nd degree, however he may have attained to even higher levels since that time. I would guess that the one who holds the highest level of initiation would be the Dragon King of Draconis himself, or whatever appellation the leader or the leaders of the Draconian Empire may go by, Branton. A uh, yes I did, but that is a loaded question, and I won't comment further. I'm not a Mason, or member of any other secret fraternal group, there is one organization I am a member of in the United States of America, that group is commonly called the Central Unit, it is a pleasure to tell you that I am a member of the Sub-Galactic League of Costa Rica, question. Is there any truth to the allegations that the CIA slash aliens have established bases on the moon and also Mars? Answer. I've heard that too, but haven't seen proof with my own eyes. The aliens do allegedly have bases on several moons of Jupiter and Saturn. The CIA operates in other countries, but I've never heard they operate on other planets. Note, perhaps we should have referred to the CIA's superior agency, the NSA whose personnel reportedly piloted black-budget UFOs between the Luna and Dreamland bases, Brenton. Question, have you heard any hints or rumors suggesting that there may be lower levels beneath the ULTRA-7 level of the doll space, and also, where these might lead to and what they might consist of? Answer. Yes, your guess is as good as mine. Sure, there was lots of talk but that doesn't mean it's there. However, I will tell you I saw elevators that were off limits unless you had an Umbra or higher security clearance. At that base, information is supplied to me at a need to know basis only, my clearance was ULTRA 7 question. Some insist that the US slash secret government has developed its own disc craft based largely upon top secret anti-gravity experiments carried out by the Nazi German scientists during World War II. Have you heard anything referring to this? Answer. When I was working in photo security, heard a lot of talk, never saw the proof, but once in the Air Force I developed a roll of film that showed a craft like a Damskis, with a swastika on the side. Note. A letter from RJM, of Pennsylvania dated 13,191 stated. I have a lot of UFO videos, I also have the Secret Land 1947, it shows Bunger's oasis and says they discovered warm land at the South Pole. One German author claims the Nazis had a photo finish fight with Bird. At the end of the movie, it says, Bird's intrepid 4, oh, 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 met and defeated Antarctica's toughest battalions, 
I don't think they were talking about the weather, another source has stated that there were loses on both sides, and the battle for Antarctica against the Nazis' last battalion which had fortified themselves, in underground bases below the mountains of Neuschwabenland, Antarctic answer, ended in a stalemate. Question. Why would Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun commit suicide after Hitler had spent so much energy, executing over 5,000 Nazi officials whom he suspected were behind his assassination attempt, at the Wolf Bunker, especially if he had a way out via a secret Nazi South Polar base? The March 18, 1994 issue of the Plain Dealer Cleveland, Ohio carried an AP story titled Doctors Find Burnt Body Could Not Be Hitler's, excerpts include. French forensic experts say the charred corpse said to be Hitler's is not his body. Experts falsified verification reports ordered by Joseph Stalin to appease the Soviet dictator. The body is actually that of an unknown German male. The forensic experts spent more than two years analyzing the autopsy reports prepared by Soviet coroners in the days following the surrender of the Third Reich in 1945. The body said to be Hitler's had an extra tooth and only one testicle. No German doctor who had examined Hitler before his death ever mentioned either anomaly. This is also interesting when we consider that the well-known abductee, Barney Hill, remembered the following experience under regressive hypnosis as recorded in the paranormal, encyclopedia, Mysteries of Mind, Space and Time. Barney and his wife Betty were abducted by gray-skinned humanoids from Zeta Reticuli, however, one of the beings on the craft was described by Barney Hill under regressive hypnosis in the following words which are taken from pages 1379 of the encyclopedia, another figure has an evil face. He looks like a German Nazi. He's a Nazi. His eyes, his eyes. I've never seen eyes like that before. Remember that this occurred nearly 15 years after Europe had supposedly been denazified. There seems to be an Antarctic connection with the doll scenario as well as other possible Nazi connections. German tourists scouring New Mexico, exploring mines and caves and buying up land and mineral rights just before the outbreak of WWII. The Nazi connected CIA's involvement and their placement of several Nazi SS agents who had been brought into the US via Project Paperclip within the DOS and other underground facilities. The involvement of secret Bavarian lodges at DOLTS and the possible Antarctic and DOLTS connection to alternative 003. Another interesting connection is the fact that the secret Nazi teams involved in the construction and operation of the underground bases below the mountains of Neuschwabenland and elsewhere in Antarctica were called Ultra Teams. Ultra is also the codonym for the DOS base. Also there seems to be a direct connection between the DOS base and the Matok base in Long Island which was is reputedly jointly operated by the Draconian Reptiloids, Orion Greys and the Bavarian Thule Society which had backed the Nazi agenda. Brenton, question. Tom, did you have access to the alien craft? Were you ever inside any of them? Answer. Yes, I frequently saw them in the garages. There are quite a few of them. The main fleet is stored at Los Alamos. Yes, I entered several crafts. There were two things that stick in my mind, the odd spongy feeling of the floors, and the unusual pinkish purple color of the lighting. The crew stated the floor becomes ridged in flight, and the purple tint of the lighting changes to bright blue-white. The entire inside of the aircraft are scaled down in size, when compared to the average human. The hulls were curved and narrow, but somehow, when inside it appears bigger than it looks. Certain areas, the outermost sections, almost felt and looked alive. I was never taken up in one. Question, can you give me more information on the reptilian race, what did they do on the sixth level? The area called Nightmare Hall. Answer, the worker cast is the daily chores, mopping the latex floors, cleaning the cages, bringing food to the hungry people and other species, it is their job to formulate the proper mixture for the type 1 and type 2 beings that, the Draco race has created, the working cast work at the labs as well as at the computer banks. Basically speaking, the reptilian races are active at all levels of the Dulce base, there are several different races of aliens that work on the E section of level 6, no, doubt some collaborating Nordic factions included. Brenton. That section is commonly called the Alien Section, the Draco are the undisputed masters of the 567 levels, the humans are second in command of those levels, I had to argue with one large Draconian boss frequently, 
His name is difficult to verbalize. Kirschfosch pronounced throaty K K H H A H S S H H F A H S H S S T. I usually called him Karsh, and he hated it. The Draconian leaders are very formal when talking to the human race. These ancient beings consider us a lower race. Karsh called me leader Castello, but it was used in a sarcastical way. However the worker caste is friendly enough, as long as you allow them to speak first. They will answer if you address them, they are very cautious beings, and consider most humans to be hostile, they always seem surprised when they found many of the humans were open and trustworthy, there is no fraternizing with the aliens off hours, it is forbidden to speak to any alien race in the halls or an elevator without a clear business, oriented reason. Humans can talk to humans, and aliens can speak to aliens, but that is as far as it goes. At the work site, however, it's different, there is free speech in the labs, the camaraderie found in the labs also reaches the computer banks section. In those areas, everybody talks to anybody. However, everything changes the minute you cross the threshold of the hall. Instantly, all conversations become strictly formal. Hard as it was, several times I had to arrest someone, simply because they spoke to an alien, it's a strange place. Question. Exactly what first made you aware that something was wrong adults, seems to me that a place as obviously horrible as this one wouldn't need an Einstein to know, that this is a crime site. What took you so long? Are you the guy who blew the whistle, answer? There are several things you should know about. I took an oath, under the penalty of death, that no matter what I saw or heard I would never divulge the information. Also. I signed a waiver that states I would willingly give up my life if I was found guilty of treason, at the DOS base treason is anything that mentions the details of daily operations at this, facility, when outside the confinement of the DOS base. When I first arrived, a need to know policy was in effect, the story the honchos told us was that this is a tri-biotransfer facility with advanced technology, doing advanced adventurous methodology for medical and mental gains, which is a fancy way of saying they do really risky things with human life just to see what would happen. If a medical cure happens, it will be heralded on the surface of the earth as a marvelous new cure, saying it was found after years of research at some well-known medical lab. The real story of the cure is never explained. After all, the DOS base is a secret facility. These people are very good at what they do, they do not tell the truth about the unfortunate people that end up in Nightmare Hall, I worked with aliens. With that in mind, you should get the idea of the secrecy and the security at that place. Yes, I know this was not the usual hospital type job site, but in the beginning I bought the whole package. I was reminded daily by Intercom, in the elevators, that this site does high-risk advanced medical and drug testing to cure insanity, please, never speak to the inmates, it can destroy years of work. I'm sensible, when doctors say don't speak to them, who was I to destroy the delicate situation, but one man somehow caught my eye, he repeatedly stated that he was George S and that he had been kidnapped and he was sure someone, was searching for him. I don't know why he sticks in my mind, I found I was remembering his face, thinking he sure didn't look or sound insane, but many inmates said that. The next weekend I convinced a friend of mine, a cop, to run a check on the guy, saying I had a run in with him and was curious, I didn't mention the base at all, it was a sickening feeling when the computer confirmed that George S was missing, what's worse, the cops thought he was just another guy that got tired of the daily grind and split. That was the beginning. Am I the one that blew the whistle? No. The next Monday, I searched for George, but he was gone, there were no records that explained what happened to him, it was another security officer that came to me saying he and some lab workers wanted an off-duty meeting at one of the tunnels, off the record. Curiosity took over and I said okay, that night, about nine men showed up. They said they knew they were risking me turning them in but they wanted to show me some things, they thought I should see, one by one they showed records that proved many inmates were missing people, there were newspaper clippings, and even photos that they had somehow smuggled into the base, they hoped to smuggle them back out, without me turning them into the honchos, I could see the fear in their faces as they spoke, one man stated he would rather lose his life by trying, than to lose his soul by not doing anything at all. It was that remark that turned the tide, I told them about George and the things I found out about him, after a few hours we pledged to attempt to expose the doll space. 
Question, the name Nightmare Hall is descriptive, but surely there was a regular name, what was it called in the manuals? Answer. In the manuals it was called the Vivarium, it describes Dulce Base as a secured facility for tending bioforms of all types, in their report it is retold as a private subterranean bioterminal park, with accommodations for animals, fish, fowl, reptile, and mankind, after seeing this park the name Nightmare Hall is far more accurate than the manual. The accommodations for the inmates at Nightmare Hall fall short of the pretty picture the manual describes. Question. You mention one reptilian leader, Karsh Fosht. Do you know anything about him? Like where is he from? Is he from Earth or some other planet? Answer. His name means Keeper of the Laws. They receive their name after they reach the age of awareness. They do not recognize time as an important factor in being aware the way humans do. Upon their age of awareness they are cognitive of the station or position they are destined to fulfill. At that time they chose or allow someone to choose their name. Their name will include the position they hold and several personally chosen letters. Each letter has a personal meaning, known only to the alien and the one that chose their name. Since Karsh's name means keeper of the laws his name includes Kosh memory or keep. Base word for Akashic record and FASHST law. Base word fast or bind. Reptilians choose to be not only private but secretive of the location of their natal place. To them birth, or emergence of life, is considered as one of the sacred rites of life. They consider Earth or Terra their home planet. But several reptoids discuss several star maps. Most of those stars were within the Milky Way. Within those star maps lies the stars and planets of the planets of the Allegiance, Earth being one of the planets in their trade routes. If any human asked clear questions about the Allegiance, the aliens referred the questions to the Draco. The Draco in turn, referred the questions to their supervisor me, I did not have that information about the stars, because information was applied on a need to know basis, I didn't need that information. Question: Did any of the working cast join in the revolt? Could you give me some names? Answer: A few of the rep are coded, before you re-enter the car, all the elevators are magnetically controlled, even lights in elevators, as well as all lights on all levels are magnetically induced, the light bulbs are not the type bought on the surface, but a totally different type of light system, the illumination found there is a closer match to natural sunlight than any artificial light, on the surface world. The shape of the elevators is unique, if you have ever seen a Tupperware sugar bowl, you could see the shape copied in the elevator, sort of like an open-ended oval with another half oval on each side, the elevator shaft matches the shape perfectly, the magnetic controls are in the half oval shape, if you could stand the nor close to the half ovals, you would feel the slight pull of the power of those magnets, the motion is smooth and silent, there is a nearly unnoticed surge when the motion starts or stops, there are no cables needed, because the lift is magnetic, not electric, since there are no cables in the elevator cars there is no chance of them falling. Question, I understand that certain groups of cleared individuals in the government are collaborating, with alien groups. Is it known how many groups and of what type they are working with? Answer, I don't know how many groups or what type they are working with. Question, a mysterious security man calling himself Agent Yellowfruit says he worked at Groom Lake, Area 51. The security officer states that he's been in contact with benevolent aliens, at the Groom Lake facility are you aware of such a group? Answer, Yellow Fruit is one of the slang names for Yellow Jack or Yellow Flag that shows quarantine, and caution in the labs, there are so many different slang names at DOS labs that meant quarantine that the workers, published a booklet to show the meanings. Adults, Yellow Fruit are the lab workers so called from the yellow light outside the decontamination, chambers, Banana is the older workers, Lemon is the new guys and so on. Question, is there an alien installation under Groom Lake or Papoose Lake at the Nevada test site, and are they conducting biological research at these sites? Answer, most of the stuff at the Groom facility deals with defense, but there is a large storage area in the tunnels that hold thousands of alien craft parts, from what I have heard, the medical tests at the Nevada test site are conducted by and for the Navy. Question, according to my sources, the aerospace companies have a secret underground installation in the Tehapi Mountains, not far from Roseham and near Edwards AFB, insiders refer to the Tehapi installment as the Ant Hill, they are experimenting with advanced technology such as anti-gravity discs, some have seen basketball-sized floating orbs patrol the facility, do you have any further information on this? 
Answer. The California Mountains Tehapi, Chocolate, Shasta, etc. All have alien security methods and equipment. The basketball size orbs are used for unmanned patrol. They are silent, but when photographing living beings there is a humming sound. The glow that emits light is magnetic aura. This light is in the visible spectrum 3900 angstroms. You can see the light, but the light does not reflect off anything. Question, is there anything you can tell me about the moon alien installations? Atmosphere. U.S. Bases. Answer. There is not much I can tell you there. I wasn't in the lunar program. I heard there was a LOT of equipment sent to the moon between 19,591,964 under Project Whiteout. Question. How do the aliens use magnetism? Do they use it as an energy source? Is there more we need to know about magnetism? Answer. The aliens use magnetics for everything. They use magnetics as the basic structure for their energy source. The more you learn about magnetics, the better. The human race calls them magnets. The aliens call them lodestar. They have been harvesting lodestars lodestones for centuries. Not only that, they want all the magnetic power on Earth. They intend to continue harvesting that power, now and in the future. As long as we were only using magnetic power as an oddity, there was no problem. But in recent times, the human race has begun using magnetic power and finding more ways to utilize that commodity. There was a treaty made. In the original treaty, the human race, or those who supposedly represented the human race, if you could call it that Branton, didn't mind at all. We considered magnets as hardly more than useless. As people searched for another source for power, we turned to magnetics. The aliens wanted a new treaty. What could we offer? They chose land, underground mining rights, animals and humans for new experiments. The general public never knew about the treaty. The governmental Bavarian cultist heads of the world chose another treaty in 1933. This time we got high technology in exchange. So now, the more we use magnetics, the more they claim humans, and the lands of the United States A. We were sold in exchange for magnets. If you doubt it, look around there are token companies that really utilize magnetic power, but are depending on electric-based or ceramic magnets, not lodestar magnetic oxide of iron-based magnets. Question, what do the aliens do with the cow blood and other parts from mutilated animals? Do they need these fluids for research or survival? Answer, the aliens use the blood and body parts for formula to keep them alive their food and for use in the growing vats, and for the artificial wombs, plasma and amniotic fluid are the two most vital ingredients for their lives. Also, the sap of some plants can keep them alive for months. Most of the plants are parasitic in nature, but red grapes and okra plants can also be added to the formula to keep them alive, if they have no regular formula. Question: Female abductees report being inseminated by aliens, are they trying to hybridize our species? Answer. Yes, they are breeding slavey warriors for the upcoming war with the alien races, the Nordic races, Branton. The serpentine races are in orbit around Earth, Venus and Mars. Question: Abductees have reported that the aliens can pass their bodies and that of the abductee through window glass. Is this a feat of magic achieved by advanced technology or is it a psychic power? Answer: The aliens have mastered atomic matter. They can go through walls like we go through water. It is not magic, just physics, we can learn to do the same thing. It has to do with controlling atoms at will. Question, are you in communication with benevolent aliens or do you have contacts that are? If you are, can you tell us how we can communicate with their teams? Answer, I am not at liberty to discuss communications with any friendly alien life forms. I can tell you there is a friendly factor active in Costa Rica, I am in direct communication with that factor, I am an active member of the Sub-Galactic League of Costa Rica. This organization, using a small satellite dish, a television set and ham radio equipment reach this factor, I might suggest that by using similar equipment and a low band frequency, you may reach the same factor. Question. Do you stay in the United States of America, or do you live abroad, do you work now? I know you have been on the run for several years. Answer. Yeah, quite a few years. I visit the United States, but it's really dangerous when I do. I've lived in several countries. I spent a few years in Mexico, working as a mercenary soldier. It's rough work, frequently living in the bush, 
eating whatever I can find. I spent time in South America, fighting the drug cartel it's not the citizens, it's the secret government, top officials and American alphabet boys CIA, FBI, etc. I settled in Costa Rica, bought a small house in Lemon. Actually it is a shanty that someone abandoned, I paid the equivalency of $11 to one of the local constables for the right to call it mine, my name changes when I think someone is asking questions, I've worked in one of the underground bases near the Panama border. It's in the mountains, not very far from a passive but active volcano. It is not as fancy as Dults, but the people are wonderful. Question, what is the best city in Costa Rica for an American to visit and maybe move to live? Answer. None of them are worth anything by comparison, but I like Lemon. There is a real culture shock when you get past the tourist sections, inside the urban areas, it's not so bad, but away from the beaten path the picture changes. There are no improvements in the shanties, no sewers, plumbing, or paved roads, but if you stay in the cities, and you don't mind the big difference in the cultures, the countries have a lot to offer. Nice weather, great beaches and beautiful trees with fruit growing everywhere. Question, are there any other security level names other than Secret Top Secret Ultra? Answer. There are many other security clearances, here are a few, Umbra, Stellar, G27Z, Triad, UMT Universal Military Training and UMS Universal Military Service, Astral and Subastral Umbra is higher than Ultra, Note, it may be conceivable that some of the higher security clearances are used for the joint human alien, interstellar projects, for instance Whitley Stryber described an abduction to another planetary sphere where he, encountered ancient ruins, aliens and human personnel dressed in military khakis and carrying camcorders, automatic weapons, etc. Obviously such personnel would have to possess an extremely high security classification, such as Universal Military Service for instance, the joint Alini Illuminati Alternative 3 projects have reportedly taken part in joint offensive operations against the peaceful residents of other worlds, this according to a couple who defected from the Alternative 3 movement after an agent from the Federation warned them about such atrocities. Branton, question, ever see a badge with MAJI? Answer. No. Question, since you have lived in Spanish-speaking countries, it's obvious that you are bilingual, what other languages do you speak? Answer. Other than English, the only other languages I speak are Spanish and Yushu, the common language alien spoken adults. I speak Spanish fluently, and enough Yushu to keep myself out of trouble, shortly after I first transferred to adults, I took a crash course in Yushu. Anyone that plans to spend more than one week working at that base, they are wise to learn the basics. Otherwise, you are required to wait for an escort to get around, all the signs at that base are written in the universally recognized symbolic language, Yushu is logical and easy to learn. Question. What are the eating habits of the aliens, are they carnivores? Answer. That depends whether they are one of the grey worker caste, one of the reptilian worker caste, or one of the higher developed draconian leaders. Also, the created beings, replicants, type 2 being, or one of the really strange genetic mixtures. I'll try to cover a little of each, the formula includes amniotic water, plasma and several other body parts raw, usually bovine. This nearly clear mixture with a texture of pureed peaches, and almost in that color. The greys make the attempt not to eat around the humans, because the odor of it is very unpleasant to any human. They can spend days or even weeks between feedings. The working cast of the reptilians eat meat, insects and a large variety of plants including vegetables and fruit. They prefer their meat raw and very fresh, but have learned to enjoy some cooked meat like rare beef steak. Note, according to many abductees, the reptiloids are not above eating human flesh. It has been said that they prefer flesh that is young enough to be free of toxins, yet old enough to be imbued with a lifetime of accumulated emotional energy residue which is resident within the human body, some abductees claim that certain reptilian factions have such complex biotechnologies that, they are able to remove a human soul energy matrix and place it in a containment box, and use the controlled body for whatever purpose they choose, some abductees also insist that in some cases the reptiloids can create a clone duplicate, of a person in a short amount of time through time warping and replace the soul energy matrix of a person back into the new clone body if their disappearance from society would otherwise create too many problems, 
This way they can ingest the emotion residue and mute original body without the abductee realizing, in most cases that their soul memory matrix has been transferred to a cloned body, because they would have experienced a total soul matrix energy transfer and a suppression of any memories relating to the transfer process. The cloned bodies do not possess the integrated emotional residue that the vampirialistic reptiloids apparently crave and find intoxicating in a similar manner as a human on Earth who is addicted to hard drugs. Branton. Unlike the greys, they eat frequently and usually carry or send for food on their breaks. The ruling caste is secretive about their foods. They have created several dietary myths that they carefully embellish when the chance arrives. One of their favorite legends involves one of their ancestors' ability to eat an entire flock of geese in one setting. They rarely eat inside of any other species. They carefully choose their food, then carry their meal to their quarters. It was only when dignitaries arrive at the base do they join their meals. They enjoy the same foods we do, and they have been seen secretly munching on a freshly found snail. The human-looking replicants eat some cooked vegetables. They rely on vitamins and liquid protein for sustenance. If they have to eat on the surface world, they can eat whatever they are served. But as soon as possible they regurgitate. Their digestive systems frequently fail to process the food properly. The engineered beings have a special diet created for their dietary needs. The mixture includes several organ foods blended with plasmatic fluids, amniotic liquids and parasitoplasm materials. These unique animals also enjoy occasional green plants, usually grasses or lettuce. The creatures that are designed to become warriors, eat Protelian janitorial crew let us know that they knew WE were attempting to sabotage the work going on in the 6th and 7th levels. One of them, with the name Shal, secretly formed a small group of reptoids with the same mindset as my group. Take note of the similarity between this scenario and the NBC miniseries V, which is now available on video cassette after years of known availability. I have it on good authority that the original author of the V idea was an investigator who knew Thomas Costello on a personal basis. He had connections in Hollywood and had written a motion picture script which was in turn seen and borrowed without permission by an NBC employee and rewritten as a miniseries. The show was based on reptilian humanoids from Sirius B who had come to Earth under the guise of benevolent human-like space brothers to bring a new order of universal peace. In reality they had a secret agenda to rape planet Earth of her resources and steal her people for biological sustenance. This agenda was being contested by a human resistance who refused to fall for the reptilians' facade. And these resistors were in turn working with a secret fifth column of reptilians who did not agree with their leader's agenda for planet Earth. Could this miniseries have had an actual basis in a bizarre reality? Brenton, Schnall took upon himself the danger of informing me. He was as open as is possible in a unique situation. On the day I found out about it, I was inspecting a camera near an exit tunnel. He approached, stooped down. The tall reptiloids average about 78 feet in height according to most witnesses Branton, seemingly scraping some non-existent dirt, and he quietly said, a few of us agreed that you are singular in your interest in missing human reports, if true, walk away. I'll reach you. If it's untrue, destroy my life now. My heart almost leaped out of my chest, but I silently walked toward one of the wide halls. For the rest of my life I'll remember those words. It was the first time I knew reptilians could have individual thoughts and opinions, basically, they formed a uniform front with a small variety of interests. Or at least, that was what we had thought. It was a couple days before I heard from him again, as he walked beside me in the 6th level's infamous hall, I heard him say enter the exit tunnel on the 6th level, north, after your shift, the next few hours were long and filled with thoughts of betrayal, or worse, but I shouldn't have worried. I contacted one of the original nine resistance men, and let him know, just in case. Gordon wanted to go with me, but I convinced him to wait a few feet from the exit and pretend he was having trouble with his car electric, like a golf cart. When I got there, there were three of them, Shal formerly introduced Fosshra and Huamshra name base word is SSHHAA or assist, with that, I quickly grabbed Gordon from the hall and the five of us talked and walked in the dark tunnels, about three hours. After that day, the joint resistance group got bigger and bolder, ultimately, it ended when a military assault was initiated via the exit tunnels and they executed anybody, on their list, human or reptilian. We fought back, 
but none of the working cast had weapons, nor did the human lab workers, only the security force and a few computer workers had flash guns. It was a massacre, everyone was screaming and running for cover, the halls and tunnels were filled as full as possible, we believe it was the Delta Force because of the uniforms and the method they used that, chose to hit it shift change, an effort that killed as many as named on their list, note. If Thomas Costello is correct in his assertion, then based on his overall revelations, as well as the revelations of others such as Robert Laser, Phil Schneider, etc., the DOS wars were the result of at least five overlapping factors or scenarios which converged, at more or less the same time or played into each other, this may have also involved a conflict of interest within MJ-12 itself, and apparently involved different security forces including the Delta Force, Black Berets. Air Force Blue Berets, Secret Service, FBI Division 5, CIA Stormtroopers and DOS Space Security. The various factors which seem to have played into the DOS wars would include animosity towards the Greys for their slaughter of several scientists and security personnel in the Groom. Wars below Area 51 three years earlier as described by former MJ-12 Special Studies Group agent, Michael Wolf. Accidental Encounters between aliens and human construction workers and security forces near DOS as, described by Phil Schneider. An attack on the DOS space resistance that was apparently ordered, by die-hard collaborators and deep evil intelligence as described by Thomas Costello. An attempt, to rescue several of our best scientists who had been captured by the aliens after they had, discovered the grand deception involving a violation of the established treaties, that is the permanent abduction of thousands of humans to the DOS and other bases for God, only knows what purposes, as described by John Lear could it be that MJ-12 slash PI-40 was unaware of these abductees, yet their superior agency the Black Monk slash MAJIC agency was aware and had agreed to an actual, exchange of human life for technology, and another factor would involve a dispute over whether human security personnel could carry, flash guns as opposed to machine guns, all of these were apparently contributing factors to the altercations which raged throughout, the DOS base beginning in 1979. Brenton. We, to this day, do not know who betrayed us, Gordon and we ran beside me as we ran into the third level exit tunnels, and he died when several bullets slammed into his back, I vaporized that assassin and kept running. And I'm still running, Gordon will be remembered. Question. Tell me more about the flash gun, is it difficult to operate, or is it like the weapon on Star Trek, that can stun or kill on different modes? Answer: It is an advanced beam weapon that can operate on three different phases. Phase 1, like Star Trek, can stun and maybe kill, if the person has a weak heart. On Phase 2, it can levitate anything no matter what it weighs, Phase 3 is the serious business mode. It can be used to paralyze anything that lives, animal, human, alien and plant. On the higher position on the same mode, it can create a temporary death. I assure you, any doctor would certify that person is dead, but their life essence lingers in some strange limbo, some kind of terrible state of non-death. In one to five hours the person will revive, slowly. First the bodily functions will begin, and in a few minutes, consciousness followed with full awareness. In that mode the alien scientists reprogram the human brain and plant false information. When the person awakes, he recalls the false information as information he gained through life experience. There is no way for a person to learn the truth. The human mind remembers and believes completely the false data. If you attempt to inform them, they would laugh or get angry. They never believe the truth. Their mind always forgets the experience of reprogramming. You asked if the flash gun is difficult to operate, a two-year-old child could use it with one hand. It resembles a flashlight, with black glass conical inverted lens. On the side are three recessed knobs in three curved grooves, each knob is sized differently. The closer the knob to the hand the less the strength, it's that simple. Each knob has three strengths also, with automatic stops at each position, the strongest position will vaporize anything that lives, that mode is so powerful it will leave no trace of what it vaporized. Question, is the weapon called a flash gun or is there a different name in the manuals? Answer, everybody calls them flash guns, or more commonly the flash or my flash when talking about it, in the manual it is first introduced as the armalux weapon. After that, it is explained as the flash gun. Question, what type of security is found at the DOS base, 
What else is used against espionage or unauthorized entry? Answer. I'll mention a few, but it would be nearly impossible to cover it all. The weapon, besides the flash gun, mostly used is a form of sonic. Built in with each light fixture and most camcorders is a device that could render a man unconscious in seconds with nothing more than a silent tone. And also there also are still in VCR cameras, eye print, hand print stations, weight monitors, lasers, ELF and M equipment, heat sensors and motion detectors and quite a few other methods. There is no way you could get very far into the base. If you made it to the second level, you would be spotted within 15 feet. More than likely, you would become an inmate and never see the light of the surface world again. If you were lucky, you would be reprogrammed and become one of the countless spies for the ruling caste. Question. According to certain reports, the DOS base is host to other aliens that live in level 5. Is that true? Can the humans freely roam or meet in a tune in the halls or is some type of protocol in effect? Answer. There is protocol from the first time you enter the base and at MUSTB followed every time, USCE and alien there. From the working caste, to the visiting aliens, to the ruling caste, there is a never-ending checklist of rules, law, and strict protocol. There is never a chance to roam on the fifth level, the alien housing area is off-limits to any human. The hub is surrounded by security, arsenal, military and CIA backslash FBI sections. The area past the security is one of the most secured areas because it houses so many classified files. The entire east side of the fifth level is off limits except for security personnel holding ULTRA 7 security clearance or higher. The garage on the west side of the fifth level requires ULTRA 4 clearance. Question: Is there proof available that could confirm the allegations of the underground base, or are we just supposed to believe you? Answer. Many people have asked that one. No, I don't expect people to believe with blind faith, there is tangible proof that has been seen, felt or inspected by quite a few folks, I'm in no position to go on a lecture circuit to explain to every person on a Natune basis, I am trying to stay alive. All I can do is state again, that DOS is a secret facility, they work hard to make sure nobody can find the place. If everyone could easily find it, it wouldn't be a secret facility. I've explained the extreme security methods they use, there is other proof available, there are five sets of copies in five different boxes in five different locations that hold, complete proof of everything I have tried to explain, here is a list of contents of each box, delivered into the safe keeping of five individuals, known only to Thomas Costello and to the individual recipients Branton, A, 27 sheets of 8x10 photographs of aliens, creatures, cages and vats, B, one silent candid videotape, begins on the computer banks, shows the vats, multi shots of Nightmare Hall, two shots of Greys, one shot of the terminal showing sign saying to Los Alamos and about 30 seconds of the, shuttle train arriving, C, 25 pages of diagrams, chemical formulas and schematics of alien equipment, D, a copy of the new treaty complete with signatures, E, two pages of original alien documents signed by Ronald Reagan as Governor of California. Each page includes Reagan's signature. The original set mentioned above is sealed in one piece oxygen free heavy plastic box. That set includes A. 27 sheets of 8x10 with original negatives, B. The videotape, and the original microfilm, from which the videotape was copied, C. The 25 original pages of diagrams with notations, formulas, alien equipment schematics plus the schematics for the flash gun and my flash gun, D. The treaty with Reagan signature plus seven other political signatures and four alien signatures. The working flash gun in that box is an extremely dangerous weapon, in the wrong hands, there is no limit on the danger it could inflict, that proof must be protected. But when placed in the hands of certain government agencies, it would not be treated as proof for an alien visitation, that government branch knows the truth and they publicly lie. Think about it like this, do you know, for certain proof? that George Washington lived, or do you believe what other people SAID about him, there is no one alive that saw with their own eyes what is claimed about him, you judge all you know about him by what other people SAID, Columbus SAID there is a new land, and it was found, I am saying there are aliens in several underground bases in this country and terrible things, happen in those places. If I die, before it is proven, search for proof, after all, 
the DOS base and the other bases aren't going anywhere, unlike UFOs themselves they are not here today and gone tomorrow. If they are there, then there are bound to be some indications of the fact. Brenton, demand that the government admit it. If enough people demand it, they will find a way to explain the base, or at least explain why they must keep it secret. There are many people that work at the DOS base that know me, I am challenging those co-workers to speak up, at least anonymously. Send a letter, or a telegram or fax to confirm what I have explained. In the name of the brave men, women, children and aliens that died trying to let the public know what is going on at the DOS facility, expose that horrid place before thousands more innocent people are tortured and die unspeakable deaths. Question. What about the elevators, do they drop from the surface to the 7th level in a couple of seconds, do you know anything about them? Are they electrically lifted, everywhere on the surface world there are elevators made by Oda's elevator company, does that company make the elevators adults? Answer: I failed to notice what brand was available in the elevators at the base, I could tell you that there is no elevator anywhere adults that drops from the surface to the 7th level. The security blueprints show the levels are stepped down, each level drops one floor only. Not even the hub has an express elevator, after the third level, not only would you change elevators, you are weight and cohen filled liquids. Question. In the DOS papers, copper seems to be high on the importance list. In what methods is copper used? Answer, one of the main uses of copper at DOS is containment of the magnetic flow. Magnets are used everywhere at that base. The infamous VAT's interiors are lined with copper, and the exterior walls are clad with stainless steel. The mechanical arm that stirs the liquid is made of a copper alloy. Other uses include dietary needs in a few of the transbiotic beings. There are several specially made cells or rooms built first with lead, then magnetic steel then clad in copper. It is in those cells on the fourth level that contain living oral essence. This essence is what you would call a captured disembodied soul or astral body. Note. This may tie in with the reports of certain Ramada viewing astral spies who claim to have projected into underground facilities like DOS New Mexico or Pine Gap Australia, only to have close encounters with these astral containment fields, or have been captured by the same and released after being interrogated via supersensitive electronic equipment. In one case an Australian Ramada viewer was probing the Pine Gap facility where he also saw three other astral spies. The magnetic or astral body of one of these people had been captured by such a containment field, which really disturbed him. This man, Robert, also saw grace and reptiloids operating in the deeper levels of Pine Gap and also Nordic type, humans who were apparently captives and who did not seem to be very happy about being there. Brenton, question. Growing multi-species beings, blood formulas and human parts in vats sounds like a bad plot to a science fiction movie. The doctors and scientists of the world claim you can't mix the species, note. Naturally this may be true, however through genetic bioengineering and splicing, this has apparently been accomplished, to some extent Brenton. The concepts mentioned in the DOS papers sounds far-fetched, could you provide information that the average surface world reader could understand about, similar things. Answer. The doctors and scientists on the surface world may say that, but underground, away from the prying eyes of ethics boards, they do grow transgenous beings. There is a lot of written material available at libraries, one of the best sources is an easy to read book published back in 1969, by Prentice Hall International, with the title of The Second Genesis, The Coming Control of Life by Albert Rosenfeld. In this book, they discuss animals that may be especially bred to supply genetically reliable organs for people and the use of fetal or embryonic material from which adult-sized organs and tissues may be grown. Also he discusses the fact that embryonic tissue has no immunological activity, therefore it cannot provoke the defense mechanism in the recipient, it will join the body not as a foreign antigen, but as a natural protein. He further discusses solitary generation, commonly called virgin birth but also known as parthenogenesis. With one virgin birth in one, six million births average O in the surface of the world, in DOS that rate is reversed, occasionally, a normally born human infant is born in the hospital wards on the seventh level, parthenogenesis is the method used to grow type 2 beings, the now common transsexual surgery on the surface world, begin at the DOS base, men became women on a whim in the seventh level labs, 
and with the fourth level technology, the brainwashing resulted in the eager desire to become a woman and that poor man whether, a willing or unwilling participant firmly believes he always wanted to be a woman, no one could convince him to believe the truth. All things are twisted adults, a quote by Dr. Ralph W. Gerard in the second Genesis put in his now classic statement, there can be no twisted thought without a twisted molecule. MOST have originated adults, question. How are the human workers stopped from telling everything about adults? Answer, implants, fear threats to harm the families, M control, also reprogramming with ELF extremely low frequency and drugs are the most common methods, to encourage the workers not to divulge the location or daily routine. Question, a construction worker at the Ant Hill and Northrop's Tehahapi base reports seeing 10 12 foot tall human looking beings in lab coats. Who are these guys, are they from the hollow earth? Note, the hollow earth theory is one that was postulated by various well-known individuals, including Marshall B. Gardner, Raymond Bernard, William Halley Discover of Halley's Comet, Edgar Allan Poe, Edgar Rice Burroughs, John Cleve Sims, John Uri Lloyd and others. Basically the thesis involves what one might refer to as the geoconcovitic sphere theory, or that as the Earth was forming in its molten state the planetary spin created a hollow or concavity within the center similar to the hollow created by the centrifugal force of a horizontal washing machine following a spin cycle. The theory, which has been postulated in paragiological theories, in adventure novels, and in some cases even in alleged visits to the inner world, states that the shell of the Earth averages between 8,000,000 miles thick, with an interior surface consisting of oceans and land illuminated perpetually by a sphere of electromagnetic and or nuclear energy suspended at the very center of the empty space, there are reputedly funnel-like openings near the polar regions, perpetually concealed by mist created by the collision of cold air from the outside and hot air from the inside, which permits ingress and egress to and from this inner world. The theory states that the inner surface has its own gravity, yet slightly less than the outer surface gravity. One Siddha theory is that between the inner and outer surface where gravity is nullified there, exists a layer of weightless or light caverns in an eternal state of chaos where minerals, liquids, gases and chemicals continually slam together from the Earth's rotation, causing intense magmatic activity, a virtual inferno, or bottomless pit. Some have theorized that based on the apocryphal book of Esdras, chapter 13, which contains non-canonized Jewish legends that the ten lost tribes of Israel disappeared, beyond the river Sambatin and to a place in the far north where humans never lived before, called Arzareth. In the last days, a path would be made through the ice and waters of the north and the lost tribes would return. There are three tribes accounted for as of this writing, or rather two tribes and two half-tribes. Judah, Benjamin, half of the Levite tribe, and apparently half of the tribe of Dan if we are to believe the Ethiopian Jews who claim to be descended from Dan. The thirteenth tribe would be accounted for by the fact that the two Josephite tribes of Ephraim, and Manasseh are considered distinctive tribes in and of themselves. As for the giants, some believe that these have a direct connection to the 10-12 foot tall Anakim people mentioned, in the Old Testament who were driven out of Palestine, following which the Torah gives no further details as to their fate, although there have been many reports of such giants being encountered in large cavern systems, below Alaska, Oregon, California, Utah, Texas and Mexico and also reports of ancient grave sites in the western US, and elsewhere where the remains of human giants have reportedly been discovered, most often they like the fifth dimensional Sasquatch people themselves have been described, as being benevolent, and less provoked. Brenton, A, they are probably inner earth drones workers. The deeper you get, the stranger the life forms. The tall men are from the subterranean levels, lower yet are the dwarf deformed forms. I don't trust either of them, there are other forms, that both the tall men and the dwarf men fear and loathe, they are similar to Bigfoot in appearance, but extremely violent and enjoy eating whatever they find while it is still alive, they are subhuman and demented, with an IQ around 15, note. Apparently, according to another source, these lower Bigfoot type creatures having more of a resemblance to apes than to the more, human-like faces and features of the much friendlier Sasquatch people who frequent the surface dwell in wild cavern systems some six or more miles deep, along with other very large and dangerous insectoid and quadruped or serpentine reptilian, life forms reminiscent to something from out of a Hydean nightmare, 
This is according to a report I investigated some years ago of a group of Spaliamuts who, reportedly broke into a vast underground labyrinth west and northwest of Cushman, Arkansas, where they encountered these types of creatures as well as friendly blue-skinned humans who, claimed to be descended from a family that had survived an ancient global deluge by taking refuge within a large ship. These ancient people claimed that their ancestors had come to the Americas and discovered the cavern world, wherein they commenced to establish their hidden civilization. Branton, the reptiloid hominoid as opposed to quadruped or serpentine life forms stay in caves or caverns that aren't very deep. They prefer the desert mountains, they use camouflage rather than fighting, but they do carry vol rods for protection flash guns. They do have a symbol, not the hokey snake with wings that I keep seeing in the public which is used mostly by the GREYS and also as a medical symbol for the Delta Force Branton. The Reptoids use a dragon with his tail in its mouth a circle with seven pointed stars in the middle. Question: There have been reports of the Delta Force having black vans with no tires that hover over the ground. How much are we United States of America already interworking with alien cultures? Answer: I haven't seen the black vans you mentioned. We are totally submerged with alien cultures. Very little of the original human cultures have survived. Question: How can WE the public go after, or expose an alien culture which is covert and hidden? Answer: Go for the best shot. That means go after the reptoid. They stay near the surface, they choose to try to hide and avoid contact. They are soldiers, doing a job and usually there are two or three at each job site. They are manning a remote post, they are not to bother the humans unless they are endangering the post. Most of them are not hostile and won't kidnap you, they may blast you with a flash gun that may paralyze you you won't remember the flash for an hour or two and cause confusion and mild fear, it could cause you to black out pass out for a while, it is their way to escape and buy time to hide any visible equipment, if you know any areas with repeated reptilian sightings, then that is the place for you to look. They are fearsome to meet face to face, and their voices are harsh and whispery with heavy SS's, but most of them understand English and several other languages, where something with a reptile not something violent, like St. George killing the dragon, in sight. If you see one, keep your hands open, palm forward, arms down, that is the non-aggression approach. Don't raise your arms, unless told to, don't carry anything in your hands or arms. If he doesn't run, walk slowly towards him, let him speak first, they consider humans repulsive and hostile and threatening with good reason, don't try to offer him anything, don't touch him or anything of his. If he hisses at you, back up a couple feet, but don't look away. It simply means he finds you smelly, don't try to overpower him, he is stronger than 10 or 12 men. Usually, if he hasn't run so far, he's curious and wants to talk to you. Fight your fear and your thoughts of panic. Question: How do we get closer to some kind of data to prove to others that there really is a danger from non-human beings? Answer: Good question. I'm afraid we will find the proof the hard way. When we are invaded, try to keep a small camera with you at all times. When you search for reptoids, keep it in your pocket. Question: Is there a specific location where the public can set up their cameras and equipment to document an alien government base? and or their activities. Answer. The problem is, most of the meetings are held in military bases or underground. The Groom Lake facility does fly several alien craft that regularly fly over unpopulated land, that go back and forth from several bases. Southern California has several notable areas. 29 Palms Lancaster or Chocolate Mountains are well known for such activities. Question. Could you provide us with a copy of your badge or card you used at adults? Answer. Badges or cards never leave the bases. All exits have bars or walls of metal. To open, to go out requires using the card. When you use it for an exit slot, the card won't come out. Each time you leave the base, you are issued a new card, with all the usual data about you, plus your weight added, corrected daily. There are several mines in the chocolate MTS that open into a base highway, but be aware that they are patrolled regularly and there are cameras there. Question: There are so many types of really far-out aliens seen in TV, movies, magazines and popular fiction. Is there one type of a fictional unknown race, in your opinion, that fits the term alien? Answer: Yes. There are two, an alien that is totally indescribable, and another would be a pseudo-alien. 
Question, what are the dimensions of the DOS facility? Answer. There are 1, 700 paved miles of roads under DOS and northern New Mexico, towards Los Alamos is another 800 miles of tunnels. The base is still growing due west. Question. What is the top depth? Answer. The first level starts 200 feet from the surface. Each level has a ceiling of 7 feet, except level 6 and 7. The ceiling there is 45 and 60 feet. There are approximately 45 feet or more between each level. The average highway ceiling is 25 feet. The hub at the base is 3,000 feet wide. Use a 7.5 minute scale map to try to comprehend the size of the place. Question: Are there regular vehicle exits that can be observed from the ground? Answer: Yes, but they are inside Los Alamos. Question: Are there aerial exits that can be observed? Answer: 20 miles due north of Dulles, across the border into southern Colorado. Branton, is a large hangar, it is hidden by a facade of cliffs, look for an isolated short road on the top of a mesa, with no road to or from the top, question, are the ventilation shafts visible, answer, the ventilation shafts are hidden by bushes or vents inside caves, there are five on the top of the mesa, be aware there are cameras inside most of the vents, question, is there external security, and can we recognize them in or around the town itself, answer, there is minimal security on the surface, most of the men and women are Air Force or Highway crew men. There used to be a Best Western Motel that hosts or hires a lot of base workers from Level 1. I don't know if that motel is still operational, most of the security force live in Santa Fe. Others live at White Pine Los Alamos. Question. Are there security sensors? What type? If so, what is their power source? Answer. Yes there are many types of sensors, radar, infrared, heat sensors, microwave, EMGW, and satellite. Most of the sensors are powered by magnetic power. The only thing you may notice on the surface, would be an occasional satellite dish. Question. If you can, give us some information on the upcoming war with the aliens, when does it start? Do you recommend going underground? Answer. The war has already begun, to start. They use weather control devices that can cripple a city in hours. Storms, flood and drought with those few things they can bring any country to their knees in a hurry. Yes, I do recommend going underground. Choose a location that has a higher elevation than the surrounding terrain. Pick out a cave or even an abandoned mining shaft or two. Bury a cache of supplies including food and water. Near these locations, place the supplies in heavy plastic boxes that have tight lids to prevent the destruction by earth burrowing rodents and insects, then plan to live like a squatter when it becomes necessary. If you own land, create a system of tunnels and tell no one. Use your tunnels to secrete your supplies, and plan to live in those corridors when you must. Question: What about the reptilian ships that are in orbit around the equator, presumably including, the original two planetoids that arrived in geosynchronous orbits around Earth at 400 and 600 miles up in 1953? This reportedly led to an NSA project which successfully communicated with the Grey Aliens, and resulted in a contact landing treaty scenario involving President Eisenhower and other executive military industrial officials at Morrick Edwards Holloman Air Force bases in 1954 Brenton, are they cloaked? Answer. They are not cloaked the way you may think, it's more like nobody is learning to SEE, even though it is in plain sight. Like the mailman becomes invisible because you are so used to seeing him you never noticed, he is alive. One of the favorite methods of covert activities is to hide their operation in such an obvious way or place that no one would suspect it is covert. For instance, hiding entrances to underground bases beneath religious shrines, federal buildings, mining works, malls, libraries, lodges, hotels or basically areas that one would consider the least likely places to hide or accommodate. An entrance to an underground facility, the underground New World Order FEMA facilities throughout the United States apparently, utilize this type of concealment with many of their bases. Branton. Question, what are the greys susceptible to? Answer. The greys are photosensitive, any bright light hurts their eyes. They avoid sunlight, and travel at night, camera flashes causes them to back up. It could be used as a weapon against them, but they recover quickly. It could buy enough time to escape. Use commands, or nonsensical words in the form of commands and they will back up. 
Their brain is more logical than ours and they do not create fun, they do not understand poetry either, what really confuses them is saying things in Pig Latin. We learned that in a hurry, and used it against them the GREYS in the DOS Wars. Question, can Greys read your intentions if you came up behind one? Answer. Yes, they read your intent, because they use your body's frequency. The human race broadcasts a frequency that they recognize as an electromagnetic impulse. Each person has a slightly different frequency, that difference is what we call personality. When a human thinks, they broadcast strong impulses. In the case of fear the frequency is loud and easy to recognize, by the same right, a calm and composed mindset should be far more difficult to recognize Branton. Question. Can we shield ourselves against their mental control? Answer. We can shield ourselves against them, however 95% of the human race never try to control their thoughts, and controlling our own thoughts is the best weapon, the average person rarely thinks in a clear pattern, that allows the brain to think in a chaotic way. Control your thoughts, and you can stop the aliens attempting to abduct and control you, controlling my own thoughts have kept me alive for years. Question: Could you shed some light on the type of human the aliens are looking for when they abduct? Answer. I can tell you that the most common are petite women in their early 20s or early 30s, dark haired boys between 5 to 9, small to medium sized men in their mid 20s to mid 40s. But, let me stress that there are all types of people being held against their will in adults, base. There are tall heavy men and women, teenagers, elderly folks and very young girls in the cages and the vets. I only mention the most common egg size are the small young men and petite women, the boys are favored because at that age their bodies are rapidly growing, and their atomic material is adaptable in the transfer chamber, the young small women are frequently very fertile. The men are used for sperm, I have no idea why they prefer small to average size men. Question: Did you ever see twins or triplets, etc. Answer: Since you mentioned it, no. It never crossed my mind to search for them. But then that doesn't mean they aren't there, there is no way I could have seen everybody at that huge complex. Question: What is the prevalent human race at the doll space? I am curious about both the human workers, and the inmates. Answer: The human workforce is made of people from every nation on the surface world. The one thing they share is that they all speak English. If you are asking if there are white, black, red, yellow and brown skin color, again I'll have to say that there is no prevalent race there. As for inmates, I could see all races there. From what I could see, it looked like there were more white people, but again, I saw a constant flow of different people, many I think, were only there for a few hours. Question. Please explain the method they used to identify each inmate. Answer. No one has a name. When first brought to this facility, they were issued one large number, usually that code has a mixture of numbers and letters. They show the place, how, and by who, followed by the time, age, sex and finally the personal number their SS, number. For example it might look like this. NVLVOAO0P0.00.0000 MOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOOO